Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Epcot continuing our adventure of eating around Epcot's World Showcase and we're at the Morocco Pavilion and we're going to be dining at the Spice Road table. I'm very excited to try this place. I feel like since I'm a picky eater this is going to be the most challenging experience for me and uh, we're going to see what we like. So let's go do this. I actually did not get a reservation because today is spring break and there were none available so I just joined the walk-up list and they told me 15 minutes and it was actually more like one minute they're ready to take me in now the spice row table is basically a Mediterranean small plate like a dining establishment where we're gonna get a bunch of different items and that's good because the whole point of this wonderful adventure of dining around World Showcase is to increase my palate and try things I've never had so when we go in here we're gonna try to like get things that I've never had before or never tried so that way you know like I said we figure out what we like here is just a quick look at the menu. You can see we have house-made hummus fries, fried calamari, and the plates are just about 10 to $12. And you can get a bunch of them, and that's kind of like it, kind of like tapas. And they also have some specialty cocktails and a bar that you can uh, get to-go drinks at, but we're gonna be looking at dining in. This restaurant is themed so well. I absolutely love it. We're actually gonna be able to have a booth. And it's kinda cool because it's like your own little thing here. It's not like a traditional booth. And I think this is our table right here with a golden table. Of course, once we get done eating, we're gonna explore around the Morocco Pavilion itself. They have so many nifty little shops and I just love all of the theming back there. So we'll do that once we get done eating here. Another thing that I like about this restaurant is the view of World Showcase Lagoon that you get from these windows right here. It's gonna be a little blown out, but wait till you see this. Isn't that amazing? It looks like they have a pretty good list of different Mediterranean beers. They have the Tusker Pale Ale, which is an African beer, and then they have the Casa and the Estrella. I think I might go with the Estrella. I mean, I've had the other beers before, but I'm not sure about that one. They also have like a strawberry hard cider, but I'm not a big fan of ciders. Here are those Mediterranean beers that I was talking about. I'm definitely gonna go with the Estrella, but what else I'm looking for is what small plates I wanna get. I know I'm gonna get the hummus fries, but I wanted to try the fried calamari as well. But then all the way at the bottom, you can see they have a Spice Road table sampler. And that comes with the lamb, the spiced chicken, and a couple of other things that I'll probably never try again. So maybe I'll just go in on that. My beer has arrived so I could take my mask off and I'm excited because this actually came in a bottle bottle. Look at this fancy thing. Uh, you know, normally I like to drink out of the glass, but you know. It's also crafted to remove gluten. So fancy that. I think I've already had this beer the last time I dined here. This isn't my first time dining here. Uh, I actually dined here with my friend Jackie. And the reason I remember is because it says the international award winning beer on here. So I thought that was really fancy. Since I want to try things that I normally wouldn't be eating, I decided to start with the hummus fries here. I think normally if I were to come here, my comfortable like go-to thing might be the fried calamari because I think I would eat that. So I'm not going to get the fried calamari. When I ate here last time with Jackie, I really didn't eat anything. I just had drinks. So I'm kind of like eager to try things I've never had before. And these look great. I'm also not the biggest fan of hummus, but I'm gonna make sure to get this nice little salsa on top. It looks like it's got some peppers and tomatoes on there. So everything all together. These are very, very delicious. I'm a little shocked actually, because like I said, I'm not a big fan of hummus, but I can eat these. I can eat these all actually, and I probably will. I'm gonna eat all of these. I'm also not a huge spice guy, and two of the dishes that I ordered actually have spice in the title. So we got the spicy shrimp coming out, and then we got the spice uh, road sampler that has the spicy chicken in it. So we're gonna see how that spice level is, and this is coming from a guy who eats uh, 
mild buffalo wings. Like I get, you know, mild or medium bonus bites and stuff like that. So that'll give you a good judge of how my spice indicator is. I believe since the rest of the food came out, I'm gonna push these to the side so that way I can come back and eat them. And the first thing we're gonna start with is the spicy shrimp. Now this is very adventurous for me. I don't even know what's happening here. There's so much going on and it looks like it is definitely very spicy. I see one shrimp tail there. Oh boy. But here is the shrimp itself and it is looking spicy. Oh, do you see that steam coming out of there? Holy moly. Oh boy, we're going for it though. Looks like there's no tails, so it's gonna pop the shrimp right in there. Okay, good news. This shrimp is amazing. <laughs> it is very, very good, and it's not spicy at all. So it's been about two minutes, uh, and I, I don't taste any spice. Like, I thought it was gonna be so spicy, but nothing at all yet. Maybe as we get down into the other shrimps that have just been sitting in the juice, they might be more spicier, but the one that I just had, I didn't taste nothing. So if you can eat boneless uh, or like just mild wing sauce, you'll be okay with eating this, trust me. Anyway, like I was saying, shrimp is the fruit of the sea. You can barbecue it, you can boil it, you can boil it, you can bake it, you can saute it. There's pineapple shrimp, there is lemon shrimp, there's coconut shrimp, there's spicy shrimp, and just say I, I like shrimp. I think that's enough of the shrimp in business. Now maybe we'll move on to the lamb business. <laughs> Here is the sampler, and you can see we have the lamb meatball up front, the tyropitica, which is a cheese triangle, and then the spiced chicken at the end there. This looks all really good. I'm just a little hesitant with the cheese triangles because, you know, I'm not a big fan of the cheese, but we're going to give it a go anyway. I think I'm just going to try it without the sauce first. Let's open her up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's just like a meatball, kind of. See if we can just put a boom, bada bang. Hmm. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Doesn't taste like a meatball. So don't think you're going to be eating a nice uh, meatball there. More or less, it's kind of got like a curry taste to it. I don't know if that's a good way to say it or not, but I don't mind it. It's not horrible, and I think I'm going to finish up those two. I think I'll skip on over to the butter chicken next, though, because this looks actually very appetizing. Yeah, grab a little bit of the chicken right here. I don't know what's that in the middle. Is that like a pita bread? Oh, yeah, it's like a little tiny pita. Maybe, uh, maybe two pieces of the chicken. And then you got the yogurt on the bottom there. Got a dangly chicken. McDangly. Chicken just tastes like chicken to me. I mean, it's pretty good. It's just chicken. But uh, I don't think anything's going to beat that shrimp. The shrimp is so delicious. I keep eyeing it up. It's across the table there from me. I had to put it the farthest away so I don't pick at it. Even though I can definitely reach it with my fork. So now I think I'll try the cheese triangle here. Now, I don't think I'm going to like this. I, uh, like I said, I, I uh, don't like cheese that much. Uh, not saying it's not good, but yeah, go into mind when you don't like something, you're probably not gonna like it. But I'm gonna try it for the sake of this video, so. Yep, not the biggest fan of this. Uh, it's mostly because of the cheese, but if you do love cheese, I bet you'll love this. It's kind of just like a turnover with cheese inside of it. Got buffalo shrimp, bacon shrimp, Cajun shrimp, fried shrimp, grilled shrimp, of all. I guess my favorite thing was the spicy shrimp. But what I think is gonna be really good is I grabbed a little of the hummus fries and then a little bit of the spicy shrimp and uh, we're gonna take it in a one bite method. This might be the perfect combination right here. Honestly though, this was my favorite thing out of everything. The shrimp I thought was gonna be super spicy ended up being not even spicy and my favorite thing. But doesn't it look like it would be spicy? Like, 
Looks can be deceiving, I guess, when it comes to food and everything else in the world. I was very close to just calling it quits until my uh, waitress told me that there is a Mediterranean dessert sampler. And I said, well, 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 what do we have here? Wow, here is a dessert like sampler and I can see they have a pistachio baklava which is my favorite already and then we have a spice cake and it's actually got like honey like at the bottom of it. You see how like nice and like moist that is? And then a Moroccan cookie right over on this side. I think I'm gonna dive right into the pistachio baklava because I already know I love this. I love pistachios. This is gonna be like heaven for me. I love this baklava so much, but now I want to try the spiced cake here. Oh, yeah This is super good and you can taste the nuts on the top kind of like a tres leches Wait till you see all the juice that comes out of this cake. You ready? Look at that That is impressive, isn't it? And they use like honey on the bottom This is so this trio this dessert platter is absolutely amazing i would come here just to get this the cookie also just so amazing hmm. and i think with that dessert trio we're done and we're gonna head on out of here that was all really really amazing i would definitely say my favorite things was the spicy shrimp and the desserts those were phenomenal i would definitely come back just to get them and i'm happy that we're trying all these different food items if you guys haven't seen any of those videos before we basically have eaten at every single sit down restaurant here at world showcase i think i only have two left i have a nifty little playlist you guys can watch but it was so much fun doing this whole entire food adventure and i can't wait to do a lot more things like this so now we're gonna explore around the Morocco pavilion and just enjoy everything that's over here sadly though a lot of it is closed at the moment and it's a sad thing because this is always probably the most beautifully themed like pavilion I feel like they put so much detail in everything that's back here the walls the floor just everything the whole decor they also had another restaurant in the complete back of the pavilion and a quick service out front for the Tangerine Cafe. But both of those are closed and the only thing that is open is Spice Rogue Table at the moment. Not sure what this random sign is right here, but it is like the genie coming out of the magic lamp from Aladdin. But it's just sitting here like, was it? Oh, see? Meet Aladdin and Jasmine now visiting Morocco. So they turned it around because they're not actually uh, visiting. And uh, the lamps of wonder. Look how fancy the sign is. All of these different shops are closed at the moment. They used to be open where you can buy like really cool things. It was just a whole like bazaar setup. And it's still nice to walk around the back of this whole pavilion. Like, isn't it breathtaking? This is the Lamps of Wonder, so this is where Aladdin and Jasmine would be meeting. Let's see if we can take a peek see in there. Well, they got the doors closed though. It's so quiet back here that they have like a pre-recording that you can actually hear. I love hearing the pre-recordings as you're walking around. This is like people just talking about the bazaar, so I'm gonna maybe you'll listen to it. You can hear it too. And inside this little bazaar area where all the shops used to be, they put up like a, like a semi-permanent bar, like a little tiny place where you can get drinks at. This is really nifty. They have tables and everything back here. And then like a little beverage station here. It looks like they got some mixed drinks. Very fancy. Looks like they sell chickpeas, mixed nuts, mandarins, just a whole bunch of different other things. Red sangria, white sangria, they even have the beer over here. Very nifty. And just a really cool spot to relax. And it's definitely cool. It's not like really hot back here. This is one of my favorite parts of the Morocco Pavilion right in here. It's so beautiful and quiet and peaceful usually. We'll see what it's like once we get in here. It's like I don't even want to talk because it's so nice in here. 
a look at all of this detail. It's amazing, isn't it? And I'm not sure if we can go in this way, but this used to be, I believe, the Race of the Sun exhibit. We'll see if it opens. Oh, wait, maybe this side? Nope. I guess we can't go in that way. But the Race Against the Sun exhibit is open. It's just got its own entrance, so I'll take you guys in there, because that's really nifty. Here it is. Look at these fancy doors, right? Now, it's gonna get really loud in here, though. can hop in the driver's seat, but oh, not available, so you can't do that now. Mainly because of COVID reasons, but you used to be able to hop in there and pretend like you're racing through the desert. And there were so many amazing things in here. Just beautiful. It's a nice little exhibit. This was the doorway I was trying to get into the other side, so I'm sure this is locked. Oh no, it's open. So it just opens up and that's where I was trying to come out right there and this is where the morocco kid cot used to be it's nice that they added that little like beverage and nut cart in the back where the bazaar used to be because or else that would be just a completely abandoned pavilion spot like nothing's back there the restaurant is closed and uh it's nice that they added something i would like to see a little bit more i feel like that's the least like occupied space in all of world showcase so we're gonna move along and kind of just hang out and make our way back out to the front of the park and check out these spring break crowds a little bit i actually have a pretty good idea maybe i'm gonna take the boat back to future world transportation to future world aboard the friendship landing so uh oh right here yeah i think we're gonna hop board we'll probably get a really cool close look at the uh barges for the new nighttime show harmonious i haven't rode the friendship landing in such a long time this is the spice road table where we just ate and you can see it only takes about maybe five minutes to walk to the future world from here but it's nice to take a boat when you can i love all of world showcase isn't it just it's breathtaking isn't it normally i like to sit on the outside but it looks like there's no seating available at this point so i think i might just hop indoors here yeah that'd be nice right here oh we're taking off Now we're spinning around. <laughs> This is such a relaxing boat ride and they have the plexiglass up between every single row so they can fill this boat right up. You just can't sit next to people. And now we're back in Future World. Well, at the front of World Showcase. We're not in Future World at all, actually, but closest to it. If you're coming to like Walt Disney World uh, during spring break or Christmas or any like very busy season, Epcot's like the best park to come to because it's so much open, it has the highest capacity, and you just got much more room than you would at any of the other parks. And now I think I am done for the day. I had so much fun hanging out and eating at Spice Road Table, exploring around the Morocco Pavilion. There are so many cool things and so many restaurants in World Showcase that I even have yet to discover. And that's why I like making these little vlogs days to explore, try new things, and just see what's out there. You never know. I hope you guys enjoy it. I think I'm all done now. I have two more restaurants. We still need to do uh, the uh, Rosen Crown, the dining room, but it's closed for refurbishment. So as soon as that opens up, I'll make it a reservation. And I think we need to do, oh, the Hacienda and uh, Tutu Italia, the other two restaurants. And we would accomplish all of the open sit-down restaurants at World Showcase for 2021 at the moment. And uh, I'll feel accomplished. So 
I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Bye.